This episode of the Turf District Podcast was brought to you by Pod Power. With Pod Power, our sponsors are making it possible for us to amplify the voices of Albertans and Alberta podcasters. This episode, Edmonton Community Foundation is helping us give a Pod Power shout out to Overdue Fines. Overdue Fines is an Edmonton Public Library podcast. Bryce Crittenden and Caroline Land host conversations about books, movies, music, pop culture, and other interesting news about Edmonton. It's a great way to learn more about what's happening at EPL and about how you can use your library card to access all of EPL's in-person and online services. To listen and find out more about Overdue Finds, head to epl.ca slash podcast. This show is also dedicated to the memory of Joey Moss. He taught us inclusion, humor, passion, and how to be a fan. You'll be missed on the sidelines, Joey. Enjoy the show. It's time to huddle up. It's the Turf District Podcast. Welcome to the Turf District, where we huddle up and talk all things Edmonton football team and the CFL. We are a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. I'm Andrew. I'm Superfan Mike. And I'm Commissioner Kay. Rebranded and back at it, my friends. Uh, thank you to everyone for being so patient uh, and, of course, for tuning in under the new brand. Uh, for any new listeners, we used to have a name that was affiliated with the team uh, and shorthand was the Empire Podcast. Uh, it's taken us some time to kind of get everything together, but now we are back as the Turf District. And why the Turf District, you might ask? I did ask. You did ask? Can you also answer? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it was just a term that was really associated with the podcast for years. Um, the uh, Oilers had the Ice District, so you said uh, if they had the Ice District, we're going to have the Turf District, and uh, it kind of stuck for the room where the podcast was recorded in, and and as an extension, it just sort of became associated with us. Uh, it was a, a phrase that if you did a Google search, we came up. So uh, I, I thought it was just kind of a natural, right? So. Uh, it sort of came out and I'm like, oh yeah, how could we be anything else? Well, and it kind of made sense to, when you said that to me, the first thing that popped into my mind is it's, it is truly the spot where we sit down and talk football. Yeah. And that's kind of what a podcast is about. We're sitting down and talking football with our buddies. So, uh, I, I really loved when you said, this is what we should call it. And I'm like, oh, okay. I can totally get behind that. <laughs> that's fantastic. <Exactly>. So, uh, <laughs> but I am so glad to be back chatting with you both and we have a lot to talk about we do um before we get into kind of team stuff uh how are you both doing commissioner k how how's the last seven months been what uh, what are you up to uh, are we allowed to be up to stuff right now or well, you can still be like what is how many seasons of star trek have you gone through i mean these are things that we all want to know Oh my, okay, I could gush and gush about things that I've watched because that's all I've been doing is, I i don't think I've ever watched this much TV in my life. Um, I get that. <laughs> well, I finished Voyager again last nice. year, I guess it would have been, and I started off January with three shows. One was probably one of my top shows, I think, ever. Was it The Mandalorian? Because it was unreal. Oh, did I watch that before January, though? <laughs> I think I finished it before January, so it doesn't okay. count. But yes, right. Fair. season two was great. It season was. two was excellent. And not Baby Yoda is so cute. <laughs> it is not Yoda, okay? It's, not, it's it Grogu. It is not Yoda. That's right. Exactly. It's Grogu. So I'm calling. Um, so that was great. Uh, I watched The Punisher. I know it's old, yeah. but I binged that in less than two days. I just, <laughs> oh I couldn't. I, wow. I didn't, I, I didn't have to work, so. Right, you know, okay. it's my holidays, so I just watched that, and, and oh my gosh, I I loved it. I loved it so much. So I hope Disney brings it back. I know Kevin Feige was kind of like, ooh, teasing, Jeez. like they might bring them back. Um, the other two I don't want to talk about because they sucked. Okay, well, and that's fair. 
Yeah, just rewatching Brooklyn Nine Nine again because it's hilarious. Yes. It's oh, last so, so nice. So good. noise toy. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, we but can... I could go on and on, so I will cut myself off right now. Well, that, that's fair. Uh, a super fan? What about you? I uh, did a lot of binging, much like Commissioner K. Uh, we watched the entire run of Sons of Anarchy. Nice. Um, Love that. Is that yeah. worth it? Oh, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. It was so excellent. Good. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's you know, my favorite series I've ever seen, but it was just incredibly well done. You get really invested in the characters, and it was just unlike a lot of other shows that were out there. I mean, there's a lot more now. Yes. Because uh, they yes. sort of started kind of duplicating that yeah. kind of style. Yeah. Um, we've sort of run their whole gamut. Of course, we watched The Mandalorian. Um, and then we watched uh, a, a Canadian show called Kim's Convenience, which has become one of my favorite shows. It's uh, just about a Korean family in Toronto that owns a convenience store. Yeah. And um, it, just incredible acting. The... Um, father on the show was on the mandalorian yes and the yes. son on the show is going to star in a new marvel movie nice no oh, yeah. fantastic he's, he's a- giving me the title character so which one chun lee oh yeah no. Ch- yeah uh no uh i know which one you're talking about but i can't remember the name of it yeah um, um if only we had some type of device of internet that would tell <laughs> us what the name shang chi did I get it right? Uh, Shang Chi. That's right. Ah, oh, there we go. Took me a second. Nicely to, I just had to not. I, yeah. And so I did um, just for confirmation. I was not looking on the internet at that particular right, it's moment. Shang Chi, <laughs> the Legend of the Ten Rings. That's right. Yes. And yeah. he plays Shang Li. So, Ooh, very exciting. So, Kim's Convenience is that streaming? Yeah, the first four seasons are on Netflix, oh. and then the fifth season just started on CBC. So, you just if you got Shaw, you can just go and you can watch the first two episodes after you've caught up. Nice. And I know Sons of Anarchy on, is on Netflix because I know that. And I, was, it is. I was debating if I should start it, but I think S- it convinced Sons me. Sons of Anarchy is very good, especially if you're a fan of watching people you like make bad decisions. It's it's, it's, dark. it's it's dark, but it's yeah, it's like I agree with you, Mike. You get so invested in the characters, and yeah. that was the best part. The writing of the characters, you just can't get around that at all. Um, I've been binging a bunch too i've and i'm i'm into season five now of the office and oh, because yeah. i needed to watch something like I, w- I watched all of parks and rec which might be one of the greatest comedy shows ever written i absolutely loved statement every minute of it it was so funny and uh and then now i'm watching the office and really really enjoying it. it i remember when it came out and i started watching it and i got about four episodes in and i'm like this i don't know if i can really i just can't get grasp what's going on but once you get to near the end of that first season it's just like then the, they kind of develop into those characters and how they link together oh then it just was so good and i knew what everybody else was talking about about how good it was so i'm not a yeah. crier but the office like I, it made me cry twice Ooh, so and really? it's a comedy show, so you get invested in those characters definitely. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. see, I've never seen it because I watched the British version. Mm. Okay, Ricky Gervais, and I'm yeah. um, absolutely phenomenal. It's only three seasons, like six episodes a season. Yeah, um, but they literally took the, those scripts and they just converted them right over to the new Office. Oh, um, yeah, So I started watching. And I'm like, I have literally seen all of this. Uh, yeah, okay. so I just never watched it, but maybe it's I'll true. give it a shot. I was going to say, yeah, p- pick it up in season two and see what happens. But the nice. the the number of times where they just look at the camera and give like the yes. the knowing face, the it's look. so so that well is done. British season two, yeah. Uh, also, though, there are lots of moments with me uh, being a boss in my own office that I watch it, and as soon as Michael <laughs> goes to talk, I'm like, please don't talk, no, stop, you're making me hurt. <laughs> like that is not okay. What you're doing is so bad. Yeah, uh, but very very fun to to watch. So, um, so yeah, I guess the the main part of what we're doing the past seven months is watching TV. Not a bad thing. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. What we should yeah. be doing now is we can all watch the old Grey Cups because they're now all Mark streaming on the CFL. Ca, yeah, a couple of decades worth. Anyway, yeah, yeah, 
I got I got to get into watching some of those. That is for sure. So, um, you know, the other things keep me busy is the puppy. So the, he, you know, yes. Wilson yeah. is okay. Wilson is keeping us very busy and very entertained. And yes, he gets uh, super excited. So we're uh, we're keeping very busy with him. And I'm sure my Twitter feed will be filled with some pictures here and there, just because. Oh, I have no. Oh, doubt. just here and there. Every time you post a picture, I'm just like seriously, like give me, <laughs> give me, give me, give me. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. he's, he's very squeezable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we get too much into anything else, I do want to send a thanks out to Third Down Gamble and to the Argo Fancast for having me on to talk uh, about all the coaching changes and, of course, the relaunch of the podcast. Uh, we appreciate you guys having us on to chat about that. Uh, I guess the first story as we go into talking about uh, the team would be uh, kind of in memoriam to Joey Moss. And I, I mentioned yes. it off the top of the show. Um, a huge deal in Edmonton, a huge deal to Edmonton football team fans. Uh, what did Joey kind of mean to you guys uh, being EE fans? Super fan, let's start with you. Um, well, I think like a lot of people in Edmonton, certainly of a certain age, um, we came to know Joey when uh, Wayne Gretzky was dating his sister. Right. And so... Um, Vicky Moss, mm-hmm. and he brought Joey to work for the Oilers. And then from what I understood, um, because he didn't want him to sort of forget everything he learned, he talked to Dwayne Mandrusiak and asked if he could be like a locker room attendant for the Esks as well. Mm-hmm. So it just sort of snowballed from there. And, and it was one of those things that for a lot of people, um, people with developmental disabilities were shunned or avoided at all costs. And this sort of brought it into the forefront because Gretzky had that kind of sway, uh, not only in this town, but in this country. Yes. And to make them understand that these are just people like you and me, their brains just maybe work differently than ours do, but no better, no worse. And uh, these are some great people with a lot to offer. And uh, I think Joey sort of humbly took on that role um, without wanting to be anyone, but just Joey Moss and, you know, how are you all doing? And and we've had a chance to meet him a few times. Um, absolutely adored by everyone associated with both the football club and the Oilers um, and the fans. I mean, nobody loved Joey more than the city of Edmondson. And, and it's a huge loss and huge shoes that are, are going to be impossible to fill. Absolutely. Commissioner? Well, yeah, I mean, what can you say? He's just unapologetically Joey he was always there he loved the city of Edmonton and its teams and represented them with so much gusto and passion and how could you not smile and appreciate exactly who he was when you just look at his face like he did I I mean what can you really say without getting emotional it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough not to see that kind of passion and sunshine on the sidelines, on the football field, at the ice rink. During the national anthem. I I was actually just going to say the national anthem will never be the same. Will never be the same in Edmonton. And that was, uh, I really enjoyed when the Oilers started and when they were singing the national anthem and then they had the video of of Joey singing and and that, that, that should just be a staple at every, Edmonton sports team <laughs> game from here on out, I think. And uh, he touched so many of us and uh, and really, you know, made us learn, but also, you know, was there for, you know, laughs. He was there to have yeah. fun. He was there to get his job done that he needed to do and to be passionate about the team. And, and I know, obviously, in our connections with the Mandrusiak family and, and the amount of time that he spent with them, um, just had some amazing stories from them and just that true connection that they all had and and how amazing Joey was. So he'll be dearly missed. Um, And uh, so I wanted to make sure we talked about him right off the top for sure. Uh, So let's get into all the, we have so much news, so much news. There's Um, been a lot to talk about. Of course, the main news of last week, uh, Scott Milanovic decides that uh, one year not coaching a game is enough and decides to resign. (laughs) And um, I mean, I guess he's undefeated, right? That is true. He, um, he, I think, is the only 
head coach in Edmonton history to be undefeated his entire career here. Exactly. Yeah. Also winless, but it doesn't matter. We just, but he's not the only one winless. So, oh, well, see, yeah. Okay, there you go. So he's the only undefeated. Perfect. That's right. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, of course, the expectation is that he's going to join the Colts of the NFL can't really blame him for taking uh, that kind of job at this particular moment. I, I wonder, what do you guys think about the idea that what p- might have played into that is that the NFL did play that season and, and we didn't get to play last season? Did you, I know I heard that from from Brock at one point, that if we had had a chance to play last season, that maybe Scott would have been a little more a- a- attached to things. I, I don't know about that, but I wonder if that makes a difference. I, I think Marcus Brady being hired as the offensive coordinator mm-hmm. made all the difference. I mean, they of course, okay. they had a relationship back in Toronto when uh, Brady was uh, under Scott as the offensive coordinator. Um, and I think that's made all the difference in the world. Um, but when you can get a job that's probably paying you double your salary as a head coach to be, I mean, I, I don't want to say just, but just the quarterback's coach. Right. Um and it's in U.S. dollars. The taxes are lower. You're an American. Your family's American. Right. It's pretty hard to say no. I- I'm pretty sure for any one of us, if someone said, listen, I want you to go to our competitor. We're going to pay you two and a half times your salary. You'd at least think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I might. I think about it for a minute before I said yes. And, <laughs> like, really? I mean, it's not the. But, but like you say, yeah. that with, I mean, yeah. with the virus, we still don't have 100% certainty that there's going to be a full season, if a season at all, this year. We're obviously all hoping for as much of a normal season as possible, but we don't know. Whereas the NFL did have a season, they're going to have a season again next year. So. Right. As a coach, you know you are going to be coaching in 2021. Yeah, very true. And and on the other hand, uh, just on that same note, uh, listening to – I know Randy Ambrosi sent out that letter to fans to kind of say this is kind of where things are at. But the one that really kind of gave me a lot of hope was the conversation that Morley Scott had with Chris Presson uh, where they talked yes. about – we have a plan for 10% capacity. We have a plan for 90% capacity, yeah, 20, like all these things in the middle. Yep. I'm like, okay, so there are other plans out there that we could at least get the football we love at some right. point. Whether or not we could be in the stands to see it, who knows, but at least there'll be football. Yeah, maybe there's football that we can go to but maybe it's just football we can watch on tv maybe there's tailgating maybe there's you're just gonna have a backyard barbecue flip on your tv and watch it whatever at least there's football to watch correct that's what i uh, that's what i'm hoping for that actually gave me a lot of hope though hearing press and have those different plans laid out that was that was a good thing for me um so Based on all of our excitement, though, with Scott Milanovic exiting stage left uh, the today, and thank you, Edmonton football team, for actually <laughs> doing it on the day when we're recording and not tomorrow. Um, the announcement came, Jamie Elizondo taking over as the head coach uh, of, of the Edmonton football team. Of course, uh, he was the front runner, honestly, last time, uh, but then wasn't allowed to talk to us because of the XFL. Right. So... Uh, and that came up a few times in the press conference this morning, sure did. which I thought was kind of uh, nice to actually say that that's what we, you know, we wanted that. So um, luckily enough, he has become the 23rd head coach uh, and even more lucky for us. Uh, we were able to catch up with him on his very first day. So welcome to Edmonton and to the turf district, Coach Elizondo. Andrew, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on. And uh, it's a pleasure to be able to join you guys and, Excited about the opportunity and uh, and excited to share some time with you tonight. Oh, thank you so much. We uh, we're, we're we're excited because it's our first show back, and we get this uh, new coach on the same day, and we get to chat with you. Uh, tell us a little bit here about the process as it kind of came up, and you jumped in very quickly over the last week. Yeah, Andrew. Um, you know, I appreciate that. Um, you know, it was a. Uh, a little bit of a surprise early uh, last week. Um, you know, this was something that uh, um, I did not foresee coming. Um, you know, Scott uh, Milanovic and I are good friends, and uh, he texted me and said that he had, or called me and said that he had uh, resigned, and uh, you know, to expect a phone call. And sure enough, not much after that, uh, Brock got in touch with me, and uh, you know, 
Brock and I have, as you know, a uh, um, an existing relationship from the time that we worked together in 2016. So, you know, it was a, a good process to go back and forth, and um, you know, we were able to find five things, you know, towards the latter part of the week, and um, you know, but uh, it definitely was a uh, a surprise. It was you wake up one day not expecting uh, this, and uh, uh, your life can turn on a dime in a second, and that was definitely the case. Oh, absolutely. Well, we're all thrilled you're here for sure. Um, what, one thing we'd like to do on the show is is let the uh, the fans kind of get to know you, like who you are and how you got here. Um, so let's go back a bit, and can you tell us how you got into coaching and the game of football as a whole? Yeah, great question, Andrew. You know, so I I, I grew up in uh, in Texas, and uh, Texas is a football is a way of life in Texas, and um, you know, I ended up uh, heading out east. To go to college, uh, I played uh, you know football at, at, at a younger age in high school and so on and so forth. But suffered an injury in high school that just prevented me from playing the game much after that, and ended up uh, you know playing professional tennis. Uh, shifted gears there a little bit, uh, but my love was always football. Uh, you know, I've uh, been blessed to be able to do a lot of different things in my life, and um, one of those things was you know go on to law school and, and get my law degree and. Uh, you know, I was at a really good school in Washington, D.C., and had the opportunity to continue with some really big uh, law firms in D.C. Or I could uh, follow my passion and uh, go, you know, coach football. And that's exactly what I did. And uh, um, so I started uh, at a uh, at a high school, essentially, and then, you know, then worked my way quickly. I was able to, you know, get back up to uh, the University of Maryland, which was my alma mater, and just kind of go from there in that track. And Along the way, been been really fortunate to work with a lot of good good people and a lot of good coaches. And uh, you know, you take a little bit of everything, a little piece of of something from from everybody that you work with. And the lessons have been great; they've been varied. But at the end of the day, you also, as you go through the process, you formulate your own vision and your own you know uh, system and your own uh, philosophy on how you want to do things if you're ever in this uh, in this chair and. Um, you know, I've, I'm a firm believer. Uh, one of the most important things I learned in the process was that you know, football is not a, uh, it is the ultimate team sport and nothing that we do here at Edmonton will be, will be centered around me. It'll be, it'll be us doing it collectively together. We'll all be responsible throughout the organization for the successes we achieve and uh, we'll all be a part of that. Um, I'm a big believer in just an inclusiveness and everybody pulling in the same direction. So I'm excited to to hit the ground running, get started, and um, and, and, and really uh, lay a foundation for something that we, we all hope is, 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 uh, is special. Well, that's I, I think that kind of fits in what we like to call, you know, how we do things in Edmonton. So that that's amazing. Um, you kind of already, you know, described what your teaching methods are and, and how you like to, to mentor your players. Um, but what... What coaches did you um, find helped you the most in in growing in football and as a coach? Yeah, Kayla, great great question. Um, you know, I think the the single most biggest uh, person that had uh, the most effect on me was uh, a guy by the name of Pete Mangarin, and you know, I've worked with him twice. Pete is a former uh, NFL you know offensive coordinator. Um, he he worked with the likes of, you know, um, guys like John Elway, Phil Sims, Michael Vick when he had his, you know, huge year in, in Atlanta. And uh, although he's more of an offensive line guy, he really understands the game well. Um, he coached for, you know, four years with uh, the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick. And so his background has been uh, been been extensive. And, and he's had the most impact on me. But, you know, you, again, you take little bits and pieces, you know, Mark Trestman's is extremely detailed. Um, you know, learn that from him. Rick Campbell just has such a great way with, with the players and a, and a very laid back approach, which is really the opposite of, of you know, uh, guys like Mark and Pete. And um, my time with Doug Marone was helpful. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, really a lot of good guys along the way um, that, that, have, that have helped me and invested in me. But I think, again, you ultimately, 
when you're in those shoes, you go, I love what this guy does, or I love this component of it. Um, I would do this a little different. And um, now, now we get to, to kind of put that in effect. And, uh, you know, um, but I think, I think, Kayla, I think the most awesome part of this business is, uh, you know, the people that you, that, that help develop you and, and the journey that you take as you continue to grow um, and build uh, your own process, your own philosophy. And, and that's exciting. Um, and I'm extremely thankful for all those, the impact that the, all, those, all those guys had in my uh, coaching career and in my life. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know about you two, but I got goosebumps already. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's excellent. Um, that tell us a little bit, Coach, of your relationship with Trevor Harris and how you will, you know, like how that, how is that going to help the team uh, on the field and in the locker room? Yeah, good question, um, Andrew. Uh, you know, Trevor and I began this journey in 2015. And uh, uh, when when I was working in Toronto, and I was not coaching Trevor, I was actually coaching the receivers at the time. And there was a spell like like most quarterbacks go through, where where Trevor, you know, struggled a little bit. And uh, I remember pulling him aside and and just talking to him, you know, um, as a man, as a brother, you know, and just giving him some words of encouragement. And uh, and I think that maybe left a little bit of an impression on him. And when we got a chance to get him at sixteen, I think. You know, one of the things that's so important about playing that position, which is really the hardest and most difficult position to play in all sports, um, you know, what we ask a quarterback to do is is unbelievably complicated, and the the decisions that those guys have to make, and the number of decisions they have to make, in, in a, such a small amount of time, is it can be overwhelming. And ultimately, I think what any quarterback wants to know is. Uh, he wants to have somebody that believes in him. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's part of where the relationship began. And, and it really grew in 2016 with Trevor. Um, he came over to the Red Blacks and obviously uh, came to us knowing that Henry Burris was a starter. And, man, uh, you couldn't have had a guy that was more prepared and better prepared to step in when, when something happened. And sure enough, I mean, there we are. Um, you know, game number one, and uh, and something happens, and Trevor steps in, doesn't miss a beat. You know, and I think that position, you know, the the relationship between a quarterback and and the play caller, whether he's a coordinator, head coach, whatever that might be, is one of the most unique in all sports. You know, you have to be a there has to be a synchronicity, a, a vibe, a connection between the two of you, almost like you're completing each other's sentences, and so. You know, a big part of that is is just liking the guy and and seeing the game the same way and having the same vision. And I think that's where Trevor and I have connected in the past and and hope to do so again. You know, obviously in Edmonton, and I think that's going to help uh, make this transition a lot easier. That's awesome. Um, so you're going to be not only the head coach, but of course the quarterbacks coach and the offensive coordinator. Um, I think a lot of people maybe don't realize that you started off your coaching career on the other side of the ball as a defensive coordinator and secondary coach, and then move from there to special teams before going to offense. So you have a really unique knowledge of all three phases of the ball. Do you think that's going to really help you with your uh, coaching staff that, that you are familiar with some of them, but not all of them? Yeah, I, I think that that's going to have a, a, a huge impact. I think any time that you can spend on the other side of the ball, and uh, you're right, you guys have done your homework. I'm impressed. I started you know, coaching uh, defensive backs and uh, started on that side of, of, of uh, you know of the game, and it, it gave me some great perspective. Um, I think the most beneficial experience for me uh, was the four years I served as a special teams coordinator. Uh, because that's the opportunity that you get to really speak to the entire team. And there's really only two people that that ever speak to the entire team, and that's the, the head coach and the special teams coordinator. So, you know, to, to be able to do that, um, you know, obviously you're coaching defensive players, you're coaching tackling, you're coaching fundamentals of uh, things that happen on both sides of the ball, and I think that helps you grow as a coach. Um, and also, you know, the, the delivery, right? I think one of the challenges uh, for any head coach is 
is what type of tone, what type of culture, what type of message do do you need to send to the team? And I think having been in that role before as a special teams coordinator and having the experience of having to motivate and having to talk to the guys on a, the entire team on a regular basis, um, you know, I'm hoping that that uh, you know helps off and, and, and as I transition into this this new role. That's so cool. You know, I actually never thought about the two people that would have the most contact or with the whole team would be the head coach and special teams. I never thought about that. So that's really cool. Um, So you've come into Commonwealth as a visitor. What do you think it's going to be like coming out onto that field at home as the head coach? I'll tell you what, Kayla, that that gives me chills as you, as you talked about it. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to play uh, a great cup in Commonwealth in 2018 and to see that stadium filled up and to have, have played multiple times and to step on, on a field where, you know, guys like, you know, E. Campbell and Ron Lancaster and, you know, coached on those, on those sidelines and stepped on those fields and all those Hall of Fame players that, that have been part of, of the Edmonton tradition. You know, it just wow. I mean, it's 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 a little it's a little overwhelming, a little surreal. But um, uh, I'm, I cannot wait um, to see that stadium full and to to just get that that feeling again of what it's like to be in in really one of, if not the best stadiums in in the CFL. Oh yeah, it never gets old. As a as all of us probably agree, going in like week after week as as fans, I've, I've never gotten sick of it. It's just electric. And I mean, mentioning guys like Pop Ivy and Hugh Campbell, you did your homework yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you don't uh, when you look back and you say, um, "Wow, I'm, I'm the 23rd coach in, in Edmonton history," and you know, you, you're following in the footsteps of, of just some legends. It's uh, um, it's I don't know the best word to describe it, other than what an honor. What an opportunity, and obviously, I'm big on legacy, the tradition. I think that's all part of, of the importance of, of any program, uh, because there's a pride when you put on the green and gold. You know, when you put that helmet on, when you put that uniform on, you're putting that uniform on, and, and so many guys before you did that. So many, you know, guys walked through the tunnel and competed in classic games, and um, you know, legends that 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 have dedicated their lives to this, uh, to this game, you know, and stepped on the field before you, I think it's, uh, it's really impressive. It's really cool. And, uh, it'll be really exciting stepping out for that first game. We can't Out, wait. Outstanding. Yeah, we can't wait. Exactly. It's been much too long since we've been able to step in there. So, so we're uh, very excited about that <laughs> ourselves. Um, and as far as uh, doing our homework, you'll get used to it with Superfan. He has, there's a reason we call him Superfan. He's really got a lot of knowledge for the history of this team, that's for sure. And anybody who plays for it. Um, we got a few questions that we just want to ask you, just kind of get to know you um, because you're brand new to the team and, and know a bit more about you. Uh, what do you like to do outside of football? Yeah, well, good, good question. Um, I love to read and in particular, you know, if I can cozy up with a good book, um, you know, and, and people ask me all the time, what do you read? I read everything. I read from, you know, fantasy to biographies to leadership books to, you know, I love reading. That's just a part of, of my DNA from when I was a little bit of a kid. I have a two and a half year old, so any time that I can spend with her is just treasured time and we have such an awesome connection. Um, you know, my wife and I never get a chance to spend time together. So when I'm not doing football, you know, I, you know, I'm going to keep it honest and simple and boring. You know, if I can watch a good movie or read a good book and hang out with my family, it is awesome. Um, you know, and that is that is a a uh, a wonderful weekend for me. I, I love today in the conference uh, how you said that the three amigos were coming to Edmonton, and it just made me laugh. And I <laughs> I love that in that moment you get to find some humor um, in the midst of uh, of the press conference. So I, I do appreciate that for sure. <laughs> Uh, do you have a, a favorite book then, if you like reading? 
gosh, about 30 of them. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so you know, that's really, that, you know what, of all the questions I've gotten today, that might be the toughest one. So kudos to you. So, um, uh, you know, there, there's so many good books. I mean, obviously, all of the, you know, and, and this is this is uh, the transparent side to me and, and then the nerdy side to me, but all the Harry Potter books are fantastic. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, uh, I've tried to I've tried to focus on my reading in different ways, but gosh, there's so many great books. We, we this this podcast could go on for hours if we started going down this road. So, um, you know, but. Uh, I'm always open to recommendations. So if you guys suggest anything, feel, feel free to let me know. You know, uh, I'm open to it. Absolutely. What we'll do is once you're once you're here, we'll and we're allowed to all sit together. We'll sit down and we'll record an hour long podcast about books, and we can find lots of things to talk <laughs> about. Um, do you have a, a favorite meal that you like to have? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I get this question quite a bit, and it's like, it, it really depends on the mood. I mean, I love sushi. I love Mexican yes. food because that's my background. Um, you know, I was actually born in Mexico um, and grew up in Texas. So, um, you know, how you guys going to have to point me in the right direction of the, the best Mexican food places in Edmonton. <laughs> um, you know, and then, gosh, you know, lo- I love Chinese food. I mean, here's here's the thing. Um, the two the two things I love, you know, in, in addition to to I love cooking, and I love spending time trying to you know whip things up and create some things. But um, I'm also a huge music fan, and um, I'm I think music is such an important part of um, uh, everyday life. You, you know, it helps you with your emotions and whether it's you need to get going or you need to get pumped up or you need to calm down or you need to create some, um, you know, energy in your brain to, to think properly. So, and, uh, I know the next question you're going to ask, I'm going to jump you on it. What kind of music do I listen to? Yep. Absolutely. Everything, maybe with the exception of the heaviest, darkest metal that you can, that, that just doesn't really uh, suit me. Um, but, uh, you know, from classical to country, uh, yeah, country is my, my favorite, but, uh, to, to techno, to, to rock, to you name it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's on my playlist. Nice. That, that, that was my next question. So good, good mind reading. I, I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> one thing about, uh, for Mexican food, I mean, one of your players did open his own restaurant in town here. So if anyone can steer you right for good Mexican, it's going to be Diego Viamontes. <laughs> he opened it. Oh, that's awesome. I did not know that. Yeah. It's called Ch Cafeteria, right? Or C H, yeah. C H, yeah. And it's like got tons of chocolate and tasty stuff. Oh, and tequiles and yeah. Yeah. Diego might be the uh just might have moved up on the call list uh, <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. Um okay, one question we like to ask that kind of is a, a, a maybe puts you on the spot, but just kind of interesting. Um, we asked, we've asked a lot of people this, if you had one person to talk to for an hour that was alive or dead, anybody, who would it be and why? Mm, great question. Um, gosh, there's just when you thought favorite meal was hard. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I think I think one of the person, you know, the, the person that would intrigue me the most, um, just understanding the sacrifices, um, and it's really a toss-up between the two, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to surprise you. It's not, it's not a football person, um, but it's a toss-up between Mother Teresa um, or Gandhi. And I just think wow. that those guys put others first, and that's ultimately why we coach. Um, listen, being a head coach is a fantastic opportunity. Um, this game is ultimately we're all ba- it's all based on the scoreboard and how you know the whole world can know whether you've had success or not, or you've done your job right or not. Um, it's a very unique profession. Um, but at the heart of coaches, and at least my philosophy, and you know, the coaches that I hope 
to surround myself with on a on a regular basis. Um, and players that you know they they are doing something that's for the greater good than than just winning a championship. You know, there's something that in coaching you are blessed with the opportunity to really take a player, mold them, help them, develop them, whether that is on the field first and then ultimately later when you can make an impact on their life, on how they uh, become fathers, brothers, sons, you know, husbands, um, whatever the case might be. I think that's a very privileged opportunity, and I think that's what Mother Teresa and Gandhi did, and I would just love to, you know, um, have a conversation with them, drink some tea. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what they would drink. But <laughs> drink some herbal tea, who knows? Um, you know, um, but uh, I think I have to go with one of those two. Ex- excellent choices. Excellent choices. Uh, well, before we let you go, let's uh, let's just open up the mic to you and just say, um, what's the first thing that you want uh, Double E fans to know as we're kind of getting ready for the season that we hope will happen this year? Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Andrew. You know, I think, um, you know, all at the end of the day, um, we want to put uh, a team out there as an organization that uh, is, is a team that the Edmonton fan base can be proud of. Um, I said this earlier in the press conference, can stand next to um, and can believe in and have have faith in. Um, and that is a reflection of uh, what the people uh, of Edmonton are like and the resiliency, the toughness, you know, the strength of character that uh, Edmonton people bring. Um, and I'm excited for the opportunity. I don't know when the stands will be filled again, but uh, I know this. Uh, this game is completely founded based on the support of the fans. Um, and we cannot wait to have Commonwealth Stadium rocking again and um, just seeing everybody supporting us and uh Thank you for sticking by us, especially through the, through the trying times. Thank you for all the sacrifices you guys have made through a, a pandemic and a very difficult year. We will always be here for you as coaches and players um, and uh, uh, and hope to, to meet as many of you guys as, 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 as we possibly can. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, thank you so much for joining us and, and taking time out of your evening. Uh, we're so excited to have you here. Um, can anybody? Can you? Are you on social media, or are you not at this point? I am on an old Twitter account. I have gotten kind of away from Twitter, but it's obviously been blown up in the last couple of days. <laughs> Maybe a touch. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? What's? Can, would you give us your handle on Twitter? I think it's at Coach Elizondo. Oh, nice and easy. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, well, we are looking forward to all of the great things that you'll bring on the team. Uh, and we hope that we get to talk to you more and sit down and have our uh, our hour-long book chat at some point. That sounds great. Just make sure... Uh Diego's there, and he supplied some, uh, <laughs> you know, dinner for the night. That'd be great. See, so. you're, you're already Andrew, way ahead of us. Mike. Andrew, Mike, Kayla, it was great spending time with you guys. I mean, I look forward to meeting you guys. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, yeah, Coach. we look forward to meeting you too. Damn, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hearing him at the press conference was phenomenal, but just having him here talking to us and hearing that passion in his voice, this is a true leader, and uh, I, I just can't wait for the season to start. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, there was at least three times in that conversation that I got goosebumps. <laughs> so yep. so um, I, I love the way that he talked about coming out as the head coach for his first game and how you can hear the excitement. Um, but the uh, what's the right word I want to say? Almost the reverence for what he's kind of walking absolutely. into. Absolutely. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I feel like there was, if we had a checklist... You know, going through like, okay, this coach, yeah, marks that's yeah, good, good, good. He would have marked like everything yeah. of what we would want in a coach. Yeah. Like, oh, yes, yes, he quick, checks all the boxes, yes. all of them. Yeah. Not to mention, he just wanted some. to talk books. Like, I'm okay with right? that. Like, great. And then grabbing my question, my next question, you're going to ask me. This is the music I like. Wonderful. Okay, I, easy conversation, right? I love it. 
Absolutely. We're just going to have to get him into some of the Norwegian death metal stuff and see, you know, <laughs> we'll ease him in. <laughs> just Mike just standing in the stands with this recorder. Here, just listen to this for just like 30 seconds. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's a death metal version of C is for cookie. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Please send me that. Well, they always refer to that kind of music, the singers, as cookie monster vocals. Is that- <laughs> Which makes it's sense. This low, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. I'm sure there's got to be a death metal <laughs> recording of C is for Cookies. If you, so if you find it. To find. Yeah. yeah. Find it and we will post it on Twitter because it'll Perfect. be funny. Perfect. Excellent. And then we'll tag Coach Elizondo and hope he listens to it. <laughs> See how it goes. <laughs> That'll score points, right? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Lovely. Uh, all right. Let's talk about some players and things, shall we? Um, There's been a few bits of changes. We have just a few things to talk about. Uh, so the re-signings list here goes on forever. <laughs> so I feel like I have to roll out the scroll to talk about all the people that are in here. Um, <laughs> Where's your monocle? You need your monocle for your scroll. <laughs> I, I need that too. <laughs> so we go Is that back Mr. Look- Peanut or the Monopoly guy? I can't tell. Mm. Both. Uh, I probably look more peanutty, <laughs> to be terribly honest. Yeah, <laughs> COVID's been bad. Like the the COVID thirty five. Instead of going to say yeah. it's no longer the COVID nineteen. No, well past the nineteen. Um, all right, let's talk about re-signing. So a big one that kind of kicked everything off. Uh, Brock Sunderland here through twenty twenty three. Um, I I'm okay with this move. I actually think I'm, I'm trying to go back and think. With along player lines, was there one that I'm like, wow, Brock really kind of blew that, and I can't think of one honestly off the top of my head. Um, they've they've done really well under him as far as getting guys on the field. Yeah, it's not even. There's two sides, right? There's the side that's the passionate fan side, and there's the side of us that is like the X's and O's or the the foot. It's just a it's a sport. It's a game. It's a business. And it's so hard to reconcile. I, that's why I could never be a GM. Yeah. So it's it's not even the signings. It's some of the sign the the not signings, right? Correct. Not signing Calvin McCarty last year. Yeah. Uh, so far, as of this recording, we haven't signed um, uh, Matt O'Donnell, and uh, especially Almondo Sewell. Yep. And these are both. I mean, <laughs> did you see Kayla's face? Oh, I did. I mean, it's not a video podcast, but that was outstanding. That was that yeah. moment that we have been missing. Okay, thanks, Where's Kayla. Bill to make a meme. Correct. Um, yes. <laughs> should have done a screenshot. Um, I should have. I think those are the only things. And it's not that they are bad choices. I think the uh, only thing about it is it's it's just tough yeah. for us to have to swallow. Uh, well, I, I agree. Yeah. I friggin' like, Tay last year. I was bawling. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like. Another great example. Yeah. But like you said, it's hard to reconcile and like, my reaction was purely out of passion and oh. and I, I don't I didn't even want to hear about the business side of it because when you connect with some of your favorite players it's like how can you possibly be like oh, it's just business I get it it's like no 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 this is my heart and soul you just ripped out thank you so much but I'm also in agreement with keeping him so yeah I, oh, I think for the, sure the thing is is that for every time that he's done or had to, I guess I can say had to do one of those things. Um, within a few months, I usually have the moment of, oh, that's why he did that, because now he yeah. got some other guy in a different position, right? And trying sure. to balance off the rest of the team. Not to say that I don't want those guys back. I absolutely do. Um, you know, I I would love to see Calvin on the field again. And mm-hmm. again, no he's one, one of my all-time favorites and uh it's really sad to not have him there yet i see where the money kind of has to be spread out and then you end up with you know guys that are going to be on this list that we're going to talk about in just a minute that are now you know improving in different areas of the team right so yes uh one of the big ones of course uh restructuring the contract of trevor harris uh through 2022 so we have him for the next two years um the the best part of that story was was hearing that Trevor kind of came to Brock to say I think we need to do this to get this right for the team. Yeah, and, and I think it makes it, the ripples of the renegotiation of that contract are felt throughout the roster. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely, because it was within within a week we had a whole bunch of people signed. So yes. I'm going to just do this in absolute order of them signing. It has nothing to do with. Um, uh, popularity or anything like that. It's just <laughs> because if I didn't do it in the order that they were signing, I'd have missed like 18 people. So, Oh, no question. All right. So uh, very exciting for us. Mr. Earthquake you back yes. through 2021, David Beard through 2023, which I think is fantastic as the anchor of the offensive line. Uh, Jonathan Mincy, who joined us at the beginning of 2020 and haven't played a game yet, but is now extended through 2022. Yep. Mike Moore through 2022. Ooh, that's I knew- big. I knew Kayla would be excited about that one. Absolutely. Uh, Jacob Ruby. So you can get yeah. another helmet there, super fan. I know how excited I you could. Are. Yes. Well, good but to I've got have one of each gem. style. Oh, that's true. So, yes. So you're good. I have now. all the styles and let's have a new one. Let's see what happens when the, yeah, when they, they name the team. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Ruby, gem of a guy, friend of the podcast, 2022. Uh, Jermaine Gabriel through 2021. Rodney Smith through 2021. Uh, yeah, that's Br- big. It, that is that is big, and he's a big dude. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> big Canadian receiver, right? Canadian or is he American? I can't remember. I think he's American. I think he is American. Okay. Uh, linebacker Brandon Pittman back for 2021. Uh, Shakir Ryan back for 2021. Danny Vandervoort back for 2021. Um, the global player, Maxime Royer, back through 2021. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Ralph through 2021. It's nice to have him back kind of in his hometown playing again. When we signed him, I was excited to see what he could do with that uh, speedy little frame that he's got going on there. We've got a lot of great Canadian receivers. Absolutely. Uh, Josh Dangby through 2021. Uh, Dreheim, uh, Tommy Dreheim, uh, which they didn't have a, a date for how long for him. Uh, Eric Lofton. Jean Simon Wa, uh, defensive back Trumaine Washington, who again signed last year and is now back. This one, it was exciting for me. Running back Terry Williams, scary Terry back, uh, oh. even just for returns. I am absolutely anytime we can take something good from Calgary and put it on our team and extend them, I'm okay with that. That's perfect. I don't know why I got like Terry Crew vibes when you just said <laughs> Terry Williams. Because <laughs> I said I scary Terry. That's why scary. I would take him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If Terry Cruz wants to play that. I mean, I don't think we'd say right? no. Right? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That Coach. would be wonderful. He could just r- bring all of his uh, yogurts, just like uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That'd be great. He could lead the cheer team, whatever. Perfect. I'm oh, down with this. I'm down, totally down with this. Uh, more names. Vontae Diggs through 2021, which is a, a big uh, help for us on that linebacking core for sure. Absolutely. Tanner Green, number 27, returning once again. And Your fave. he actually uh, said on uh, Instagram that he that I could message him so that we could get the helmet signed. So Nice. Ah, I'm very excited about that. That'll be fantastic. And through 2023, too. So wow. very not not very often you're seeing three-year deals right now. So it's nice no, to see but that. No, Canadian pullback to get that locked down, that's awesome. Yeah, love it. Uh, Scott Hutter through 2022. Tavon Smith through 2021 who is becoming one of my favorite uh, (laughs) Canadian receivers and I end of that 2019 season he was just taken off and uh, I'm I'm excited to see more of him Uh, Money White Sean yes through 2021 Jake Ceresna through 2022 yep uh, which is a great ad again I really liked him when he was here the first time so uh, Kevin Floss again I hope he does the floss. That'll be fun. On a sack. That's a sack celebration. That's his sack celebration. That's it's better than Quaku's quote unquote hula, hula hoop. hoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love you, Quaku. That's not what Let's that go. is. That's no, doesn't no. No. Uh, Kevin Elliott through 2021. Colin Kelly through 2022. Harry McMaster through 2022. Anthony Parker through 2021, which is also, again, another big Canadian receiver. James Tuck, the monster on special teams. And Uh, pullback. Absolutely. 2021. Uh, Jonathan Walton. Yay, the Waltons are back. Great special, special teamer. Absolutely. Through 2022. Troy Williams through 2022. So we have uh, some quarterback depth. And of course, most recently, the one and only Greg Ellingson coming back and, through 2022. And three more today. Oh, yes. And there was three more today. And I forgot to write them down. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Shy Ross. 
receiver. Yes, Canadian another receiver. Canadian receiver. Uh, Canadian running back, Alex Taylor. Alex Taylor Drive is back in town. Good, perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, safety uh, bully, Jordan Beaulieu. Yes, and that was the one that I should have remembered for sure because we all liked yep. Colin Bully. And uh, with another year under his belt. Now, did you see that he was on like some type of... Uh, French Bachelor? French Bachelor, right? What? <laughs> in Quebec. I know. I need to have him on. To- you met his <laughs> girlfriend there. Oh, did you? St- but did you see him with the short hair, the whole short, flowy hair going on there? No, wow. the flow was gone. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Holy man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is going to be fun when we get to see him again. Hey, dude, we bring you Ruby a did it first. <laughs> Jacob Ruby cut the flow first, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, but, you know, uh, he didn't cut it to go on The Bachelor. So. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> That we know of. That we, that's true. Maybe he was shortlisted. That's probably, it's probably <laughs> what it was. Yeah. Probably what it was. Um, Greg Ellingson, though, coming back, uh, I did not think that was going to happen. I was oh. really, really surprised, pleasantly surprised um, that Greg Ellingson, Ellingson was back for another year. What a receiving core. Oh, yeah. We're not, we, we haven't quite with. got to the good I know. The other parts yet that are coming. So uh, let's just do that right now. So welcome back, uh, friend of the podcast, Darrell Skywalker. Um, oh, yes. I, I tell you, when you, when you, like you said, Mike, when you, when you list out that uh, wide receiving core. And there's more to come on oh, the list. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't there's more down there, but even that, like it's just think about having Darrell Walker and Craig Ellingson on the exact same field at the same time. And Armonte Edwards. Like that's nuts. And the, Devon Smith was really coming around at the end of 2019. And speed. Yeah. Like, and, and Rodney Smith with that, he also, yep. but he has that giant frame as well. So that's enormous. Um, and then, yeah, I like well, well, we have more guys to talk about, but I I gotta say though, I I was just super excited to see Darrell Walker back and oh. to, to see Elling at Ellingson at the same time. I think Trevor's just gonna have a field day with so many people to throw to. Who are you gonna double? I, correct. I like. I, I don't know. If you're a defensive back, you've got to be hating this. Yeah. <laughs> If you're a CFL fantasy player, you're like, which one is going to be the one that's going to get all exactly. this week when they double everyone else? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, also, welcome back to defensive back Robert Priester. Um, yeah, who, we liked him in 2019 camp. Yeah, absolutely. I thought he had a lot of fire playing there. So I'm excited to see what he can do in that, uh, that halfback position. Um, now, we did have some releases. Yes. We'll talk about those first before we talk about all the other new guys. Um, starting, of course, the big one recently with Ricky Collins. Yeah, that was um, great right, game, lousy business. Yeah, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but when they signed Ellingson and you knew that uh, Ricky had a, a bonus coming, it was like, uh, the writing's on the yeah. wall unless he's going to restructure. And if we're not going to restructure, then that's likely not going to go any further and a tough one. Cause again, if you add Ricky Collins in that list, holy crap, <laughs> that's a lot of speed and, and catching ability, but um, well, yeah, unless we go with Paul Reckner's suggestion of having two footballs on the field at all times, <laughs> it's going to be super <laughs> tough to keep all those receivers happy. So it's very true. It's very true, but I'd be willing to give that a shot. Well, I'm why not? I mean, really? I mean, go ahead, defend both. Yeah. <laughs> Defend both balls. No matter we, no matter how we say that, it's going to be wrong, right? Or is it? Ah, uh, true. Fair. Uh, other releases: Blair Smith, longtime uh, Edmonton player. Uh, it's a tough one it's for tough. sure. Uh, friend of the show, Justin Renfro, which uh, also tough. But to see him really play. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, T.J. Smith. Kenny Shaw, Alex Charette, Bryce Bartlett, Malcolm Washington, uh, guys that didn't see the field a whole heck of a lot um, at no. this point. But but new guys, brand yes. new, spanking new guys we have never had to talk about before unless they were on other teams. Defensive back Jonathan Rose. Now, that was a uh, big signing to put him on the other side from Mincy. Now yeah, we're talking some- huge in the corner. Yeah, absolutely. And now the only thing I will say is that I do hope that, you know, he, 
we've matured a little from pushing the ref over, but <laughs> I'm sure that the learning experience, right? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. So, I, it doesn't bother me that he did it once. It'll bother me if he does it twice. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, then now joining us from the wonderful Hamilton Tiger Cats, it is wide receiver Mike Jones. Who? Nice. Well done. See, Thank I did. You. We did that specifically for Josh and Mike, uh, yes. who have graciously allowed us to use who for Mike Jones. So that's and exciting. we will uh, absolutely uh, again. Though another speedy Canadian receiver. Uh, then Bone Crusher offensive lineman Derek Dennis <laughs> comes up the highway uh, to likely take over one of those tackle positions. Yeah, I, you've got to think he's got to be written in pen. For the left tackle spot at this point. This is, he's not quite penciled likely. in anywhere. Yeah, quite likely. Um, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, we still technically have Sir Vincent uh, as, as on the roster. Right. So we have the last two most outstanding offensive linemen currently signed at the, the Edmonton Football Club. Right. Yeah. Uh, that aren't named Stanley Bryant because he right. won a couple of That's times. right. Yeah. But still, yeah, yeah they're, yeah, but. <laughs> We count them. Uh, Well, I guess. They kind of have to. Like, they're in the league. Are they? (laughs) Nice. Oh, my. All right. Uh, Other new guys. Uh, Linebacker Antonio Jones Davis, who is a uh, younger dude coming up. I I couldn't find a whole lot of stuff on him as of yet. Wide receiver Jerry Louis McGee, which that's uh, that is a sweet name. Absolutely. It is. Louis McGee, come Louis on. McGee. Yeah, come on, right. Louis Mack. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> Louis Mack. I'm waiting for Kayla to come up with some dope name for Louis McGee. I just Good. came up with a dope dance. Oh, what well, do you want? Not, <laughs> not a video, a video <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a I dope dance. I reserve it though. for specialty reasons. So, yeah. It was a dope dance. I'll give you that. That was pretty good. Uh, defensive end, James Fulston. Uh, now, here's a fun one. Linebacker, Mike Smith. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> what? Did you? There's a jersey I need to get. Yeah, I would think so. Just just purely just to say that, you know, you have this. No, no, I am Mike Smith. Wait, what? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, running I made back. a career move. <laughs> oh, that's a career move that Mike wants to make. You know that. Yeah. Right. Uh, especially as a linebacker. I totally see you as a linebacker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Linebacker, fullback. <laughs> the fact that you both went, oh, yeah, at the same time was awesome. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, running back, Walter Fletcher. Uh, defensive end, Tavon Grant. Wide receiver, uh, Kyrie Denny? K- Kyrie I Denny? Think so. I think it's Kyrie. Kyrie Denny? Okay. Uh, wide we'll receiver. Yeah, I, I hope so. Wide receiver Ernest Edwards, defensive lineman Justin Cates, defensive back Nafiz Lyon, uh, defensive lineman Christian Rector. Come on, super fan. You know nope. you want to say it. No, you're not going to do it. Oh, okay, fine. I wonder if he's related to Jamaica, Rector. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Defensive back Darius Williams, national defensive end Nate Anderson, which was a 2019 draft pick, and offensive lineman Randy Richards. So lots of new names uh, coming in for when the time comes that we do have some kind of training camp and we can sit back and try to figure out how many different names we can give new players. I'm sure we'll come up with some good ones. I hope so. We don't have Hakuna Matata anymore, so we need some... We need Very some sad kids. about that. I am too, yeah. Yeah, because he's a good dude, yeah. Um, let's play free agency, choose your own adventure. Um, <laughs> so each of us will pick one player that we would like to see the Edmonton football team sign, and then next show we'll just see who is right. <laughs> oh, I don't for- know. Now, is this going to include people that are with the club? Yes, I will that include now that. that are not signed. I would, I would include that. Sure, why not? Let's just all say this is our free agency. Choose your own adventure. Pick one. Let's see who is one. right. Come on, oh, just for man. fun. No, I have like three on my yeah. list. <laughs> right here. Well, who's your top one? Okay. Well, that. If my expression didn't, you know, <laughs> oh, no, suggest I, it earlier. Oh, trust me, I, I got it. I picked it up. <laughs> yeah, I did pick it up. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so outside of the obvious, if I wasn't so loyal and didn't love Trevor Harris this much, I'd be all over Mazzoli. <laughs> Figuratively, okay, but he signed. He signed to in in Hamilton. What? He signed in Hamilton. Yes. He's back. Yep. When did he sign? Uh, last week. Last I just week looked at the list, and he was the number one free agent. They need to update their list. Wow, yes, that was that came out the day he was signed. Yep. Well, yeah. that's stupid, CFL. Get your stuff together, man. <laughs> <laughs> you let him know. Oh, you've they've offended the commissioner. Oh, well, good for you, Hamilton. That makes it easier. Of course, I would pick Mondo in a heartbeat. I don't care. Yeah. Okay, I kind of care who we have to get rid of, but at the same time, <laughs> like, if we got rid of, we got, Calvin's no longer on the team. He couldn't retire as an Eskimo. That's okay. It's fine. Uh-huh. We, yeah, we're going to. Couldn't retire in Edmonton. Yeah. How, uh, I cannot see this team without Amanda Sewell. I can't. I just. Business wise, Pash, I don't really care. My heart needs Mondo on this team. Fair. F- yeah. Um, but then again, my fangirl side is like, I want Enoch Muamba so bad too. <laughs> Damn it. That was going to be my pick. <laughs> Sorry. That was my pick for is that we still don't have a middle linebacker. So I would be okay you, if we went with Enoch. Well, you saw my reaction at Grey Cup. I uh, did. I was. I was I'm well aware of that one. Yes. Fangirl to the max for Enoch, but I mean, over Mondo. Oh man, I don't know, man. I can't. I don't think I can. It's fair. That's that's my 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 fantasy. Sophie Sophie's choice, just like the same oh, good fantasy. V- v- Vandavision and and Vandalorian. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> Shout out man, to the Tight Ends awesome. podcast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. What's up with Gronk? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, super fan. What do you who who do you okay, have on so your list from the team currently that we have not resigned? Obviously, Mondo will be up there, uh, but I'm going to go with Shaq Cooper. Um, uh, yeah, we, because we, I mean, yes, we do technically have um, some running backs signed, but I, I loved what Shaq Cooper brought. Uh, if Terry Williams is going to be the primary returner, I'd want to see him also be the starting running back because that's that's yeah. a lot of wear and tear on the body. Mm-hmm. Um, from other teams, uh, to poach someone off of someone's free agents, uh, I went with Taylor Loeffler. Oh. I think getting a hard-hitting oh, wow. safety back there um, would be really, really great for us. Um, and uh, he's proven he can he can bring the lumber. And uh, I think with guys like Rose and Mincy, uh, Forrest Hightower, uh, we've got a lot of good DBs in there, but I, I would like to see a good Canadian safety back there. That was, uh, yeah. And also, also is, you know, so. if, if he joins the team, then Brazilian Ty loves our team. That's because true. Because <laughs> that's the greatest player ever, right? Yeah, that's, that's true. He loves right. some Loeffler. That, that would be, well, who doesn't love some Loeffler? Mm-hmm. Because we like just saying that. I love some Loeffler. That would be the t shirt that we would make. That's what I love think. some Loeffler. That would be. Yeah. yeah. Slot backs and anyone going around across the middle does not love Taylor they, Loeffler. They won't get the shirt, but the rest of us will have it. Yeah. That's right. I, I love the Loeffler. That sounds like <laughs> there's a title of my sex tape in there or something. That doesn't sound <laughs> like it's. It's totally inappropriate, as they said that out loud. Um, I fought the Loeffler and the Loeffler won. Okay. <laughs> I hope he joins the team solely so that we continue these puns. That's what I'm hoping for. Really, that was a big one. Um, okay, so here's here's one that I had. Um, we're still kind of wondering about linebacking position and things like that. Yeah. What about Micah Awe? Yes, it's a good choice. Possibly joining in on the team. I think that would be kind of an interesting add. And uh, again, we're, uh, I mean, there's still the chance that we could still be getting back with Justin Tuggle and have him come back on the team. Larry I Dean, mean, for that matter. Ab- absolutely. They're, they're available. I, I just don't, I don't see Larry Dean coming back out this way as much as I would love it. Um, but Justin Tuggle is definitely that was going to be my one from the team to uh, to pick. So I'll go with Tuggle or Micah Alway, and we'll see. I don't see Alway on the list. I thought he was on the list. They said the other day that he might. Uh, I think he was one that was he was going to get released because he was due a bonus. Oh well, maybe not. I maybe not I'm see wrong. him on the list, so maybe. Well, fine then. I could be wrong. I was just reading. Aww. 
Fine. Then, well, they don't fine. Then Larry Dean. Then. Well, fine. I love the law. Actually, man, I don't know if he's actually, <laughs> I don't think he's a free agent. I think he already is a free agent. Maybe that's what it is. That's what I think the issue is. Okay. So, uh, but yeah. Okay. So I'm going to stick with my pick then. Micah Alway, Justin Tucker. Perfect. So, uh, and Kayla, you had Mondo and Henoch. Yeah. Okay. So who, you, who do you got from that's currently on the team that you want to resign? Me? Yeah. Tuggle. All oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Keep I just said. Because he didn't actually play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, Pretty sure. Twenty twenty doesn't exist. We've we've uh, we've uh, we've we've gone past Mike's bedtime. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. Long past. Yeah. Long. Okay. Fair enough. If um, Matlock's over, I'm asleep. I'm just saying. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, as soon as you finish your tea, that's good. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Okay. And then so uh, so super fan, you had uh, who did you have from the team? Shaq Cooper. Right. Shaq Cooper and, and Taylor Loffer. I love the Loffler. Perfect. I'm going to call him that from now on because it's outstanding. As you should. Perfect. All right. Um, if anybody has uh, wants to hear about our thoughts on the team name, check out our YouTube live, uh, as Jed Roberts would say, uh, as we talked a little bit about uh, us changing the name of the show, but also the team name. Um, we're going to have a bunch more to talk about, but this show is getting awfully long, so we don't want to keep you for too much longer. Uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks. We'll talk about will we have a season, when we think it might start. We'll talk about the schedule. We'll get into all of those other things. Uh, before we finish off here, this episode is also brought to you by Taproot Edmonton, your source for curiosity-driven coverage of our city cultivated by the community. Taproot has launched a project to find out what you want the candidates to be talking about as they compete for your votes in the 2021 municipal election. It's called the People's Agenda. Visit taprootedmonton.ca to indicate what your key issue is. Taproot's team will use these responses to create an agenda that reflects the priorities of the people. This will shape their coverage leading up to the election in October of 2021. This project needs to hear from as many Edmontonians as possible, so add your voice today at taprootedmonton.ca. I do want to say thanks again to Coach Elizondo for joining us tonight. It was an amazing conversation with him uh, and well worth going a little over our regular time limit to uh, talk to him and, and listen to all the exciting things he had to say. Uh, if you want to find him on Twitter, it's at Coach underscore Elizondo. Uh, you can find him there and maybe he'll start using it again now that he's back and busy <laughs> with that. Uh, I also want to give a shout out or a, a, a I guess a recommendation to check out the history Wrangler show that's coming out every Friday uh, or every yes. second Friday. Uh, we did a little piece in there on some of the history uh, of the team and uh, as did the uh, horseman from the Stampeders show. And uh, we are doing a little competitive rock, paper, scissors uh, right. in there to win a steak dinner as well. But there's lots of great history in there. Mike, you did a great job writing all of those uh, like history segments and as you always do and uh, it was amazing to and fun to record those and, and have a little fun to get that back and forth on there so check that out um as always, follow Pay It Forward with Football on Facebook and Twitter. Um, they're doing a lot more and have more exciting things coming. So follow our great friends, Quentin and Sam, uh, as they continue to spread the message of joy. Um, Absolutely. Of course, lots of great shows coming out from the CFPN these days. So catch up with all of those on the cfpodnetwork.ca. And, uh, of course, all of the great shows as well on the Alberta Podcast Network. It's been a while. It's at Alberta Podcast Network. Dot com. There it is. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> where do we find uh, you guys online, Commissioner? Where do they find you? At Duchess Lombardi on the Twitters. Lovely and super fan. Pretty much everywhere at 56 Parkies. Excellent. And uh, you, of course, you can join in the huddle uh, with at the Turf District on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's all the same, the Turf District, nice and easy, uh, which is also my handle now. So if you want to just talk to me, then uh, you'll find me there too. Um, and we are working on a new website to hopefully get that up soon. Uh, I'm trying to look for some help for WordPress because it's way out of my <laughs> league. But if somebody has some spare time and wants to donate some time, we'd really love some help. Uh, we will be back in two weeks to talk all things free agency 
And for Commissioner Kayla and Superfan Mike, I'm Andrew. Remember, you can't catch footballs with your face, and we will absolutely talk to you in two weeks. Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter. 